So a couple of weeks ago, I got a email from a gentleman known as John, and he sent me an email with regards to a mysterious Sega Genesis cartridge that he had acquired and he didn't know what to do with because he doesn't own a Genesis himself. So we got talking on email, very, very nice guy. And he sent it to me to take a look at and see if we can get it dumped and see what exactly this Sega Genesis cartridge is. So the letter reads, Hi Demetrius, apologies in advance if this is the wrong way to contact you about this sort of thing. I have somewhat of a mysterious Sega Genesis cartridge labeled Visitor. I have no idea what's on it and don't own a Genesis myself, so I haven't tested it. So this was what the contents of the package contained. Now here is the cartridge, and this is the interesting one that we're going to take a closer look at, but he also sent me, and I haven't seen this before guys, so if someone else has, please let me know in the comments below, a Sega CD original score of Echo the Dolphin that was composed, arranged, and produced by Spencer Nielsen. And on the other side, is a Sega CD original score composed and arranged and produced by Spencer Nielsen for Batman Returns. Now these are Sega CD audio discs that you would play on a Sega CD, but these are just regular CD audio discs. So, and this is pretty interesting to me as well. Again, I'm not really up on Sega CD as far as, you know, what's been dumped and what's out there and what's not out there, but we'll definitely get a close look at this and and get it dumped for you guys as well now this is the main event this cartridge here this mysterious sega visitors cartridge so the first thing that we would normally do is dump the rom and then see what's on the cartridge itself but what i'm going to do first is open this up and see what's going on inside because i mean this could really be anything it could just be a retail game with a a different sticker that's been stuck on there. Maybe it was something that was in a store as some type of demo. Who knows what the origins of this is. I'm sure someone out there may know the origins of what this visitor cartridge is, but let's go ahead and take a look at the PCB. And so let's get our tools here and start opening this thing up. Already I can tell that this is not a retail board. Uh, it looks like maybe it's some type of prototype board. And as you can see there, this is definitely not a retail board. There are two EEPROM chips on the top here. There's also sockets for additional ROMs. If we turn this around, you can see that there is an e there are two EEPROMs here. This says ship one, upper right. And then this has been cut off. I'm assuming that says ship zero, but I'm not sure what it says here. It's, I think it says code maybe. So yeah, this is definitely not a, a retail, uh, you know, PCB f from a retail Genesis game. This looks like a prototype, maybe some type of development board. So I'm definitely not up to speed on my Genesis prototype hardware, but this does look like a prototype board or some type of development board at least. So yeah, very interesting. Next step is, let's go ahead and get this particular ROM dumped, or this cartridge dumped for the sake of preservation and seeing what's actually on it. So how do you dump a cartridge like this? You would use something like a Retrode. This is a pretty simple device that allows you to plug in a Genesis or a SNES cartridge by default and basically plug it into your computer, press a button, and it should dump the ROM for you very, very easily like it's just another folder on a file system somewhere on your computer. So this is our retro ROM dumper and all we need to do is open it up and place our Genesis cartridge here in this slot here and now plug it into our PC. The contents of the ROM is called Technopop for Overseas. So this is already giving me a few clues. Technopop was a developer for the Sega Genesis that was founded by Randall Reese in 1990. Technopop is best known for Spider-Man vs. the Kingpin on the Sega CD, as well as Zero Tolerance on the Sega Genesis. Zero Tolerance is the very first FPS for any video game console. Even today, going back and replaying this game, it's technically very impressive on the Genesis and also supports multiplayer via two-player network link cable. At this point, I was starting to get a little excited. The sequel to Zero Tolerance, known as Beyond Zero Tolerance, was in development but was cancelled and the game never came out. So the next thing I did was take the ROM dump and load it in an emulator, Kega Fusion. 
The ROM booted and the title screen came up with the words ship. This was not beyond zero tolerance. So what was it exactly? I did a little bit of Googling to see if this game was already known about. It turns out that this game ship was indeed developed by Technopop and was unreleased. It happens to be a very early demo or prototype. In 2007, website The Hidden Palace were able to build a version of this game from source code that was discovered on a development kit. But it's unknown if the ship demo was ever found on a cartridge before this discovery. The ship game looks to be the beginnings of a very basic Asteroids clone. Perhaps for Technopop to get familiar with the Genesis hardware at the time. You can move a ship around, shoot bullets and thrust like you can in Asteroids, but not much more, there is no enemies. Other than the sun in the middle, and the gravity of the sun is pulling the ship into the middle of the screen. Based on what I've read on Sega Retro and the Hidden Palace, it's an identical version to what they have, although this may be a different build. As for the origins of the visitor cartridge, that does remain a mystery. Googling turns up nothing at all, and I don't see any examples of any other such cartridges. So we know what's on this visitor cartridge, however, I still have more questions, specifically about this visitor sticker that's on the case, because it looks like it's one of those stickers that you would get stuck on when you would visit a corporate office and you were a guest or a visitor of the company, they would, you know, just stick a visitor pass on you to get access to, you know, Sega. So it seems like that type of sticker was stuck on here. So what I decided to do was I reached out to Randall Reese, was able to get a hold of him, and he told me some really interesting things about this cartridge. Randall confirmed the ship visitor cartridge to me was indeed his work, and went on to say that this is the only cartridge ever made. It was sent to Pico Interactive, and John, the owner of the cartridge, purchased it as part of a larger auction lot in May of 2018. Rather than an Asteroids game, Ship is a take on the classic game Space War, essentially a two-player game. Randall sent me some detailed information of the cartridge. The game is essentially a two-player Space War. I've always been a big fan of the original arcade game and had one of the arcade games for years. In fall of 1990, Ken Balthazar Sr., the then president of development for Sega, asked me as the first US-based licensed developer for the Genesis if I could make a sample game for general distribution in source form to the growing development community on the Genesis. Given extremely limited documentation on the Genesis, I managed to code a fully functional two-player game, Sega logo, title screen, text menu, sprite animation, scaling and rotation, collision animation backgrounds, number of lives, sound effects, physics, and of course the game logic. The title screen uses conceptual artwork from Gary Jones, who did the conceptual artwork for me on Spider-Man and Zero Tolerance. When I brought the finished ship game cartridge to Sega headquarters, I was handed yet another visitor sticker, having been on site dozens and dozens of times. As a joke, I stuck the visitor sticker on the cartridge and it fit like an official game label. Ever since, the demo has had two names. Sega purchased the source code from me and ship was distributed to every Sega Genesis developer as starting code for their games for years. Then it occurred to me that I remember Randall was at the Portland Retro Gaming Expo in 2019. And surely enough, he does discuss this ship demo and the very same visitor cartridge at his talk. I'll leave a link in the description below for that. One last thing to note about this, I did a byte comparison against the dump version of the cartridge that I made and compared it to the Hidden Palaces build and there are differences in the ROM. So I've uploaded my ROM dump to archive.org. Link is in the description below. So there you have it. That is the story of the mystery visitors cartridge for the Sega Genesis. It's a unique one of a kind. And I wanna say thank you to Randall Reese for reaching out and basically telling me the story behind this interesting cartridge. And I wanna say a big thank you to John for sending me out this cartridge to take a look at on the channel. I really appreciate it. Now guys, before I go, I wanna mention that the dump of the ship cartridge is available on archive.org. You can download it and take a look at it. It's nothing particularly interesting in itself other than just a piece of history. And I also wanna say thank you to the folks at the cutting room floor for giving me some information about the version that they have on their website. This particular one is different as far as the byte for byte comparison. 
There are differences between this one. So I do think this is another iteration of the ship demo that has been discovered. Well, I'm going to leave it here. Thank you so much for watching. This will be the last scheduled episode of 2020. I'm taking a short break to celebrate the holidays and the new year with the family. So have a wonderful and safe holiday. We will be back on Monday, January the 4th with new episodes. Leave me a thumbs up and I'll catch you guys in the next video in 2021. Bye for now.